Welcome, this is Debbie Mayberry with National Kitchen and Bath Association. You're here for our fourth and final webinar of the month on design software. Today's session is called 3D Kitchen and Bath Design and Chief Architect with Philip Gibney, who is with Chief Architect. He's a sales and marketing consultant. I want to give a quick shout out here to Gebert for their generous sponsorship for all of our webinars this month. I'm going to pass the baton on to Philip. Thanks for being with us, Philip. Thank you, Debbie. Well, welcome everyone. We're excited you can join us today. As Debbie mentioned, my name is Philip and I'm with Chief Architect Software. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with Chief Architect, Chief Architect is the leading developer and publisher of 3D home design software with a strong emphasis and features for kitchen, bath, and interior design. And in this webinar, we're gonna look at how to efficiently create floor plans, wall elevations, details, and more with Chief's automated tools. Throughout the webinar, we'll be using 3D rendering, and we will look at the 3D rendering features that will help your clients visualize design options and material selections. And we'll look at how to use Chief Architect's free 3D viewer app to help share your designs with clients. Um, throughout this webinar, we're gonna be using the actual software, and we're gonna go through the process to create a kitchen design. And we'll be talking about a few bath design features along the way since they work exactly the same as the kitchen features. And we're gonna start by creating our initial kitchen floor plan. And we'll look at how manufacturer cabinetry works in Chief Architect. We'll create a wall elevation and dimension it. We'll be using 3D rendering throughout the entire webinar. We'll look at some of the 3D rendering techniques later in, in the webinar. We're gonna go through different design options with the example of a kitchen island, and we'll look at the style palette feature to show how you can quickly show different material options. As mentioned, we'll be looking at bath design features along the way, and we'll wrap up by looking at the virtual reality features and 3D viewer app in Chief Architect. So let me get switched around here. And the kitchen we're gonna be designing is this kitchen that you see in the background here. All right, so when you first open Chief, at the very top of your screen, you're going to have different, different tools. So there's going to be tools for walls and doors and windows, cabinets, and more. And these tools are also available through the drop-down menus at the top. So when I click on my wall tool, you notice on the left-hand side, different types of wall tools become available. There's going to be tools for exterior walls, interior walls, foundation walls. And when you're designing a kitchen or interior space, you can choose one of these top tools. And if you look down below, we have some wall tools specifically for bath design. There is a glass wall tool or a pony glass wall tool. And if we take a look at a photo of what this looks like, here's an example of a bath where we have used our straight glass wall tool. And then we also have that same bath with a pony wall where you can see it has a different lower type, a cap, and then an upper glass. And you'll also notice in this bath, there is a glass door um, specifically for bath design. So that glass door feature is available underneath the door tools, says shower door. But to get started, we are going to pull up our wall tools and I'm gonna use our straight interior wall. And then I am just going to click and drag four walls. And as I'm dragging, you can see I get a temporary dimension showing us the length of the wall. This is acting more as a guide at this point. We'll come back through and fine tune the, these dimensions for the room here in a minute. So at any point in your design, you can take a 3D view. So at the top of the screen, there's different camera tools. There's orthographic camera tools, and then there's 3D camera tools. So I'm gonna select this option. And the first one is a full camera tool, which is like a first person point of view. There's a full overview, which is a bird's eye view. There's a floor overview, which you might hear me refer to as the dollhouse view. And the difference between these two is the floor overview um, has the roof and ceiling intentionally removed so you can look into the design. It's just a nice view to work in and we'll be mainly working in this uh, view throughout the webinar. And then if you're using Chief Architect Premier, there's also a framing overview. So I'm gonna select the, full, the floor overview and you can see how that brings up our design and using my mouse, I can left click and rotate my design. And then using the scroll wheel on the mouse, I can scroll in and out to zoom in. And then clicking and holding that scroll wheel, I can pan around the design. 
So super easy to maneuver around in 3D in Chief Architect. And you can also work in your 2D views and your 3D views at the same time. So now I've got my floor plan view and my 3D view side by side. I'm going to dimension this space. So to do that, I'm going to jump into our floor plan view. And when I click on one of these walls, you'll notice that I get temporary dimensions going across it. So if I want this wall at the top to resize its length, you can see that's currently 261 inches. And the program comes with a template for a kitchen and bath design that has it set up to most standards, such as being in inches and locating window surface, window casings and so forth. But if I wanted this wall on the top to resize, either the wall on the left or the wall on the right is gonna to have to change its position. So I've selected the wall on the right and I'm gonna select the dimension and I'm going to enter in my new desired dimension and press enter. And you can see how the program bumps that wall out. So I'm going to do the same thing. I know I want this wall over here to resize. So either the wall at the top or the wall at the bottom is going to have to move. So I'm going to select the wall at the bottom, select the dimension, type in a new dimension and press enter. And there that kitchen resizes. So the next thing I want to do is I want to tell Chief that this room is going to be used as a kitchen. And the reason for that is it helps automate uh, the design process based on your default settings. So um, to, to tell the program that this room is going to be used as a kitchen, I'm going to select once in the room. And then in the bottom toolbar, click on Open Object. Now, this opens the room specification. And when you open objects, it opens up a similar looking specification in that there's different categories of things you can change on the left. You can make the changes in the middle. And then on the right, you can see a 3D preview as to what that looks like. So I'm gonna switch my room type from the unspecified room type to the kitchen room type. And before I confirm that change, watch what happens in our little 3D preview on the right-hand side to the molding. The molding updates because the default settings for the kitchen room type are using a different molding. So it's just a quick way that you can set up things in your default settings based on room type to help automate your design process. And we'll look at it a little bit more in a minute when we um, work on some dimensions. But if we go down to the structure panel, here's where you can set room height information. And as an interior designer, you probably need to be aware of the values from your finished floor to your finished ceiling. If I hover my mouse over the finished ceiling value, watch what happens to the graphic on the right hand side. You can see that that value updates in red, just making it easy to recognize the changes that you're making. Just going down this panel, if you wanted to adjust your moldings, you can do so here, adjust the wall covering and so forth. I'm gonna click okay. And when I do that, watch what happens in our 3D view. The floor type updates because the default settings for that kitchen room type um, had a different flooring material. And in our floor plan, you can see that we have a room label. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to add a window into the plan. I'm going to pull our 3D view so that it's our main screen that we can focus on. And to add a window, I'm going to go up to the window tools and then just make sure I have the window option selected. And when I move my mouse into the 3D view, you can see a little gray outline showing where it's going to be placed. And I'm just going to click once to place it. If I select on this window, you can see that we get little temporary dimensions showing the size of the window. And I can use these handles to resize it directly in our 3D view. If we double click on the window to open up its specification, just like with the room, it's very easy to modify and design. On the left, there's different things with the window you can design. In the middle, you can make those changes. And then on the right hand side, you can see those um, changes occur. So here we can change the size of it if we prefer to do so through a dialog. Um, you can change the floor to bottom or floor to top values. You can change the casing, the lintel, the sill, the sash, and so forth. So pretty easy to navigate through these, uh, through these menus. I'm gonna go ahead and click on okay. And you can see that with that one simple change, how it just adjusted in the um, 3D view. And then if we go back to our floor plan view, you can see how that window is coming in and you can see that we have a window label um, already generated. And if I click on the window, you can see that we get a temporary dimension. And since I'm using that kitchen and bath template, 
it's showing the window size from the casing to casing. And the casing measurement is going to the wall surface on the left-hand side. So if I wanted to adjust this window's position within this wall, I can select on this dimension, type in how far I want it from the finished wall, and press Enter. And it's going to update its position in the plan. Now, if we take a look at a photo of the completed design, I have an exact copy of this window on the other side of the screen. So let's go ahead and see how we can add it. So you could add another window over here and make the modifications that I just made. But because I've already done this once, um, we're going to just create a copy of it and mirror it to the other side of this wall. So I'm going to select the window. And then in the bottom left corner of the screen, there's different tools for interacting with the window. And I'm going to select the option that says Copy. And then that brings up a, a couple of different ways that you can uh, paste the object. And I'm going to select the option that says Reflect About Object. And then we'll be reflecting our paste about uh, the center line that you see there. So I'm going to be reflecting the copy about the room. And there we have it placed into the design. So the next thing I want to do, if we take a look at a photo of the completed design, we have a range and a range hood back over in this middle section. So let's go ahead and add these next. So to add these, we, we need to open up the library browser. So the library browser is this button towards the top right-hand corner of the screen. And when I do that, you can see that there's different folders for the core catalogs, the bonus catalogs, the manufacturer catalogs, and then user catalogs. So the core catalogs are what ship with the program by default. Um, if you download the free trial from our website, it'll download the core catalogs along with it. There's going to be bonus catalogs and manufacturer catalogs on our website. Um, if I expand the manufacturer catalogs folder, you can see just a snapshot of the manufacturers we have available. This isn't all of the manufacturers. There's more available on the website. And then the user catalog is where you can store items that you've custom created or that you use frequently for quick access. So you can see that I have a folder with some items that we're going to use during this demonstration. So to get started, let's go ahead and place that range. So I'm going to go to our wolf cooking folder. You can see all of the options that they offer. I'm just going to come down to gas ranges and then just find the range that I want to use. You can see a little 3D pr preview as to how that looks in the library browser. And then I'm just going to come in and you can see in the 3D view where I'm going to be placing it and click once to place it. And there we will add it into the design. I want to make sure I have it centered up in the room. So I'm going to select it and then use the center tool. You can see that gray dash line indicating where we're going to be centering it. And there we have it placed in the design. So the next thing I need is a hood over it. And if we come down to the user library, I already have a range hood that I frequently use in the user library. So I'm just going to come in, click once to add it to the design, and then just make sure that I have it uh, placed against that, placed over that range. And there we go. So the next thing, if we wanted to move these around as a single unit, we can select both objects by holding control. And then there's a button in the toolbar that says make architectural block. And what that does is the program treats them as a single unit so that we can select it and then move them around together. Additionally, if, this were two, if these were two items that you'd be using regularly, you can click on the Add to Library button in the bottom left-hand corner, and it'll add them into your user catalog. So pretty quick and pretty easy to get items into your design. Um, let's go ahead and press Undo a couple of times to get those, that centered back. And then let's go ahead and unblock them. And then if we jump back to the floor plan view, you can see how that's starting to get added. And if I click once in the room, there's an option down here in the bottom left corner that says NKBA Auto Dimensions. When I click this, it's going to place dimensions around the room in accordance with NKBA standards, such as locating wall surfaces, the window casings, you can see our overall dimension from wall surface to wall surface. And then there's an appliance dimension going to the appliance center lines. So really quick to get those dimensions generated. And next, let's go ahead and jump back to the floor plan view. And let's talk about how cabinetry works in Chief Architect. So to add a cabinet into the design, I am going to 
go up to our cabinet tools. And there's going to be options for base cabinets, wall cabinets, uh, full height cabinets, fillers, and more. And to get started, I'm going to just add a base cabinet. Now, when you add a cabinet into the design, it's going to have a door and drawer, hardware, a countertop, and a material picked out based on the default settings you have specified. And what makes a cabinet a manufacturer cabinet in Chief Architect is by using a manufacturer folder from the manufacturer, um, manufacturer sec section of the library. So in my library, I'm going to go up to a manufacturer I already have picked out. In this case, I'm going to use content from Sightline. You can see that they have different door styles, finishes, and then other accessories that they offer. I'm going to go to the door styles folder. And then you can see all the door styles that they offer. And then I'm just going to click once. And you can see the different door styles available. I'm going to select the door style and watch what happens to the design when I move my mouse over the cabinet. You can see that the icon for the mouse changes, indicating that I can swap out the slab door that's on the cabinet with the door I have selected from the library. When I click once, you can see that update. And then I'm also going to do the same thing with the drawer. So there we have the door and drawer picked out. And then the next thing I want to do is pick out the material for the cabinet. So I'm going to go back to the library. I'm going to drop down to Sightlines Finishes and Colors folder. You see they have a lot of different options for the material you, for the material you can use. And I'm going to go down to the Wood Stains and Glazes folder. I'm going to expand the Red Oak folder and click on it. And again, watch what happens when I um, when I move my mouse into the screen, you can see that it's a little spray icon. And in the bottom left-hand corner, there's different distribution modes for how you want to apply this material. So I'm in component mode right now, meaning that I'll only replace a materials component. So watch what happens when I click on the door. You can see that I'm just replacing the material on the door. But if I switch to object mode, I'll, re I'll replace this white material everywhere that it's at on the, um, uh, on the uh, uh, cabinet. So I'm going to click once to place it, and there you can see how it's updated. So the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, make it a little bit darker stain. So I'm going to go to the Colors um, folder. And you can see the different colors that are available with it. If I come down, there's an option for natural brown glaze. I'm going to select it. And then again, watch what happens to my mouse when I bring it into the plan. You can see that it's updated to a rolling pin. And when I click on the object, watch what happens with the wood grain. You maintain the wood grain, but it's now that shade that I've picked out from the library browser. So pretty easy to adjust the materials and the style of cabinet that you're going to be working on. And the next thing I want to do is I want to update the countertop material that is currently on the cabinet. So earlier I was on Silestone's website and I found a material that I want to use for our countertop. So I'm just going to highlight the name of the material and press copy. And then if I go back to Chief, I'm going to go ahead and just paste it into the library browser. You can see where it brings it up. If I right click and select the show in browser option, you see that it pulls it up in Silestone's folder. And then I'm just going to click and apply it to the cabinet. So there's going to be, so there's a lot of ways that you can adjust your cabinetry in Chief Architect. I'm going to go ahead and double click to open it up. And just like with our other objects, there's different categories of things you can change on the right. And then you can make those change, or excuse me, on the left. And then you can make those changes in the middle. So if you want to change the size of it, you can. You can change the countertop that automatically generates over it. If you wanted a backsplash automatically coming up from the back of the cabinet, you can. And I'm going to be using a different tool to generate a backsplash a little bit later on. If you want to change the box construction, so if you wanted it to be framed or frameless, you can specify that here. Specify the information about the overlay or whether you want it to be an inset style. On the front side's back panel, this is where you can decide the face of the cabinet or the sides of it. And um, we'll be looking at this panel a little bit later on. On the door drawer panel, if you prefer to pick out a door style or your hardware through a dialog, you can do so here. 
you can add different accessories onto your cabinets. And you'll notice that there's an option for cabinet feet. This is good when you're designing vanity. Um, for example, you may be designing bath vanity or just general furniture and want to specify cabinet feet. And then you can continue to going down through these panels. If you wanted molding, such as with wall cabinets, you can add them here and then other parts of the cabinet. So let's go ahead and click on OK. We didn't make any changes there. But now that I've got this cabinet designed, I want it to be the cabinet that we use for the rest of our base cabinets. So I'm going to select the option that says set as default. We're going to get a message saying our base cabinet defaults have been updated. And now whenever we add a base cabinet into the plan, they'll be based on this style. So let's go ahead and delete this cabinet. And the next thing we are going to do is we're going to start by focusing on the cabinetry in this left hand corner of the design. So I'm going to go ahead and close the library browser since we're done with it for the time being. We're going to start off by going up to our base cabinet tool. And I'm just going to click and come in and watch what happens when I push it into the corner. You can see that it updates to a corner cabinet there. And then I'm also going to place another base cabinet right next to it. And then I'm going to select this base cabinet. You can see I get those temporary dimensions and handles to resize it just like with the window. And I'm going to resize it its width to be 30 inches. And watch what happens to the door on this cabinet as I resize it to 30 inches. It changes to a set of double doors since if you have a cabinet that's 30 inches wide, it probably doesn't have a single door. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add a wall cabinet. So I'm going to come up to the wall cabinet tool, come and just push it into the corner, just like the base cabinet. And you can see I already have a molding specified on top of it. And then we gonna place another cabinet right next to it, select it, and then resize it to be 42 inches wide. And there we go. And then I want a copy of this wall cabinet and base cabinet over along this wall here. So I'm going to hold control to select both of these cabinets and then press copy and then reflect about. And then I'm going to reflect them about the edge of our corner cabinet. And there we have them in position. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to make these two cabinets in the corner a pie cut style. So if I double click on the base cabinet, there's an option down here that says diagonal door. And when I uncheck it, you can see how it makes it a pie cut cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And then we're going to end up doing the same thing with the wall cabinet. But one thing about uh, our wall cabinets and moldings is that the moldings are smart and regenerate. Notice how if I move our wall cabinets around, the wall moldings update. If we double click on this cabinet in the corner to open up specification, we can even make it curve by specifying the bow depth amount. Right, you can see how it's coming in curved. And if we click on OK, that updates in our 3D, pre 3D view. So pretty cool how those wall, wall cabinets work in the moldings. I'm going to open up that corner cabinet and just uncheck the option for diagonal and make it the pie cut style. And there we have these few cabinets completed. And then the next thing I want to do is work on this cabinet and the space in general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this cabinet and then I'm going to resize it to 36 inches. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make it have a bank of drawers. So I'm going to double click on it to open up its specification. And in our 3D preview on the right, I'm just going to click once. That's going to jump us down to the front side's back panel where we can configure the design. And if we look at this menu a little bit more closely, you can see I have the doors selected. And down below, there's an option for item type. So you can pick out a different item type if you would like. You can specify the height of the item if you want to be very precise with the height of it. And then there's options for seeing it open in 3D if you want to and control, controlling the reveal amounts. And then on the right hand side over here, there's different controls to add a new item type. So if you want to add more drawers or an opening or something, you can do so here. But what we're going to end up doing is having a bank of drawers. Now you could add new components to the face of this cabinet and specify the size of them. 
make sure you're doing the math right by adding up all the item heights and dividing it by four and inputting that. But since we're using smart design software, we're going to let them program do that math for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the door. And when we do that, you can see that it creates an opening. And we're going to remove the opening so that we just have one large drawer. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to split this up so that we have four drawers. And I'm going to select the split horizontal option. I'm going to select it again. And one more time, and we have four drawers. Now, these drawers aren't the same size, and we want to make them the same size. So as mentioned, you can do the math, add up the item height, and divide it by four, and input what the item height of each component should be. But we're going to let the software do that for us. We're going to select the vertical layout parent. And what that does is it selects all these items, all the drawers, I should say. And then we're going to select the equalize button. And there, the program has verified that they're all going to be the same height. So pretty quick and pretty easy to get those dialed in. And we're going to press OK to accept those changes. And there, they're updated in the plan. So I want an exact copy of this cabinet with the bank of drawers over in this spot here. So I'm going to press the Copy button, Reflect About, and then just reflect it about the edge of itself. So there we've got the cabinets over in this corner of the design put together. But the next thing we want is those uh, cabinets over in this area. And instead of doing that again, we're going to do what we did with the window and that we're going to select them, create a copy, and reflect the copy about to the other side. So what I'm going to do is in the 3D view, I'm going to select the first cabinet, hold control, and select the other cabinets. And with them all selected, I'm going to press co the copy button, the reflect about button, reflect them about the range, and there we have them on the other side of the room. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add a backsplash into this area of the plan. So to do that, we have a smart tool that's just called the backsplash tool. And this tool is located underneath the cabinet uh, tools. If we come down, you can see it says custom backsplash. I'm just going to click once on our walls. And it's going to add a backsplash. And the backsplash is going to come in with the material that you have defined in your default settings. So you can see the material that I've picked out. And one of the really cool things about this backsplash is that it's smart. Notice that if I select this window and I move it around, the backsplash updates so it's not cutting through the window and it's just going around it. Let's press undo there. Um, and let's add a wall niche in this area and see what happens to the backsplash. So I'm going to go up to our wall niche tool and just come in and click once to place it. And just as we would have expected, the backsplash updated. And let's make sure that wall niche is centered over the range. So there we have our cabinets in place, the backsplash, and the wall niche. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create a wall elevation with dimensions for this wall. So let's go ahead and close this 3D view. We can always generate another 3D view at any time. And to create a wall elevation, I'm going to go up to our orthographic view tools, select the wall elevation, and then just come in and click and point the wall elevation that I want to um, uh, create the view of. You can see how it comes in. And I can select these uh, objects in the design and click and drag them wherever I wanted to if I wanted to work in the um, wall, wall niche, or excuse me, if I want to do my design work in the wall elevation. So for example, if you wanted to design your corner cabinets, um, maybe you wanted them not to be a pie cut for some reason, you can open it up and check or uncheck the diagonal door option. I'm going to cancel out of that. But next to get dimensions in the uh, plan, there's a tool up here for dimensions, and there's an option for NKBA auto elevation dimensions. Now, when I click on it, it's going to generate dimensions through the floor plan that locate objects based on NKBA standards. And you'll notice for the most part, it looks pretty good. However, some of these dimensions are a little bit busy. If we zoom in over here and we select on the dimension to see what's going on, you can see that in the plan that there's little diamond handles that are picking up various objects. So to remove these um, dimensions and just clean up the string, you can come over and select these dimensions and drag the diamonds off, right? So pretty quick to do. You just kind of come through and 
figure out what you want to have displayed in that string and either remove dimensions. Right, so that looks that, that looks pretty clean. Um, if we ever wanted to add dimensions onto the string, when I click, you'll notice that where I clicked on that string, there's an extra diamond handle, and you can select that and then just click and drag to bring it back onto the string. So pretty quick and easy to work with these dimensions, and you would just go around your floor plan, click on them, and recognize what you either want to locate or not want to locate. You can also use the other CAD and text tools to further notate this elevation view. And once you have it dialed in, you can save it by pressing the Save Active View button in the top corner, and then close it. And if you ever wanted to open up that view again, you can just double click on that elevation. So for the next part of the design, we are going to focus on the cabinetry over in this area, um, specifically this built-in microwave, and we'll also look at this fridge over here. So I'm going to get into a 3D view. I'm going back to our camera tools, and this time I'm going to select the full camera, which is like a first-person point of view, and just click and point it over here. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to work on our base cabinetry. So I'm going to select our base cabinet. You can see it's 30 inches. I'm just going to resize it to be 42 inches. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add a base cabinet to house our microwave. So I'm going to go up to our cabinetry tools with the base cabinet selected, come and place it once, and then just click it to resize it to 30 inches. And then the next thing to add the microwave, I'm going to open up the, the library browser. And then I'm going to scroll down to the user library folder where I already have a microwave picked out that I want to use. This one's from Wolf. And then you can see how my mouse cursor is different when I bring it into the 3D view. And then I'm just going to click once to place it into the cabinet. And there we have it into the, uh, the cabinet. And then the next thing I need is a wall cabinet to fill this space. So I'm going to go over to our cabinetry tools, click once, and then just make sure I have it bumped up against that cabinet. And then I'm going to resize it. And then I also just need to quickly adjust the backsplash to go along there. There we go. And then for the next part, we're going to add a fridge into the wall opposite of what we're currently looking at. So in my 3D view, I'm just going to flip our view around. And I already have our fridge and the cabinetry that surrounds it pre-saved in what's known as an architectural block, which we talked about earlier. So I'm just going to click once to place it. And you can see I need to make an adjustment to it. So I'm going to come into the floor plan view, rotate it, and then just make sure I have it pushed into this area. And then I'm also going to unblock it, so that's individual components. There we go. And that's going to complete a good portion of the design. For the next part of the webinar, we're going to talk about creating multiple design options for your client in the form of using a kitchen island and having a countertop overhang options. So I have an island in my user library already created. Um, to make islands, you essentially just place cabinets and other appliances and fixtures and block them together. So I'm going to click to place it into the, the plan. You can see how it got added, and we need to rotate it and make sure it's positioned correctly in the plan. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to jump back to our floor plan view to do that. So I'm going to select the island, rotate it around, make sure that it is centered in the room, and then make sure that it is positioned 48 inches away from those cabinets on the front. And there I've got it in position, and then I'm also going to unblock it. And there we've got the island added to the design. So you can create an island once, add it to your library browser, and then quickly drop it into future plans. Um, the next thing we need is a sink over here for the island. So I'm going to, again, find that from the user catalog. I've got a sink from Kohler I want to use. And watch what happens to the countertop when I click on it. You can see that Chief cuts a hole in that countertop where the sink should be. And then if we look over here, we need to add a dishwasher. I have a dishwasher already picked out. And when I click once to place it, it'll replace that cabinet with the dishwasher. So our island's starting to look pretty good. 
And next, let's talk about the countertop design options that you can present the client with. So we have four countertop design options, really five if you count the island and countertop we currently have. So we currently just have a basic flat countertop. However, for one design option, you might overhang that countertop. Another design option, you could curve it. Another design option is you can make it a thick block. And then a final design option would be you could drop that thick block to the floor in the waterfall style. Waterfall style. So let's go ahead and run through these. It's really quick to do this in Chief. It'll probably take us about two or three minutes to do. So the first thing I need to do is when I click on the countertop, you'll notice in the bottom left-hand corner, it says base cabinet. And the reason for that is countertops automatically generate and move around with your base cabinets. However, if I hold control to select these three base cabinets, um, you can see that there's a button in the bottom toolbar that says generate custom countertop. So when I select that, we now have that countertop selected and can move it around independently. And so the, for the first thing we're, we're gonna do is uh, uh, pull it out so that it's overhanging by six inches. So I'm gonna select it and pull it out. And as I'm pulling, I'm gonna press tab and then specify that I want it to come out six inches and press okay. And there we have the countertop coming out. And one thing you'll notice is I have a line right here. The reason for that is I have our rendering technique setting to overlay a line drawing on top of a, our standard 3D render. And we'll take a look at what that means a little bit more in a little bit. So you can see where the custom countertop is and then where the, manu where the automatic countertops are generating. So the next design option, we curved it. So I'm gonna select the countertop, select the curve option in the bottom toolbar. And there we have that countertop curved. Um, if you wanted to adjust the radius for this curve, when with that countertop selected, there's a little triangle that you can use to adjust it. Let's go ahead and press undo there so that we're back to having just a straight edge overhang. And for the third design option, we are going to make it a thick block. So I'm gonna double click on it to open up its specification. There's an option here that says set thickness from counter from cabinet. When I uncheck that, I'm gonna enter in six inches and click on okay. And there you can see that bumps it up to a nice big thick block. And then for the last design options, we're gonna drop it down to the floor in a waterfall style. So we're gonna kind of focus in on this part of the countertop. And I already know that it is overhanging by one inch and I need it overhanging by the thickness of the countertop. So we need to overhang by six inches total. It's already overhanging one inch. So we need to bring out another five inches. So I'm gonna select the edge and then just drag it out. And as I'm dragging, I'm gonna press tab, specify that I wanna bring, bring it out another five inches. There we have it brought out. And then I'm gonna press the button in the bottom toolbar that says add waterfall. And that'll drop it to the floor. And then I'm gonna come around to the other side over here select it and then just like with the previous side bring it out another five inches and then with that edge selected drop it to the floor and that's going to complete the island countertop so really quick to do that you can show your clients different design options and they can potentially change the value of the jobs that you're selling to the client so for the next part of the design we are going to look at material options so we're gonna use a feature called the style palette, and we're not gonna go through the details of how to create a style palette in this webinar. Um, if you need information on how to do that, there's uh, resources available on the Chief Architect website. But the style palette allows you to create styles of objects such as doors and cabinetry, um, windows and so forth, along with material selections, and pre-save them into a configuration that you can quickly apply to a room. So you can see kind of this uh, default style that we're starting with. And then we have a couple of other styles that we'll quickly add into the plan. So I'm gonna go through the library browser. And what I'm going to do is open up this folder that says style palette. You can see the style palette that we're starting with. And you can see it a little vector view of what that looks like in the, um, in the browser. But I'm gonna select our next style palette. I have it called traditional. 
I'm going to change the scoping mode to be plan wide. And when I click into the plan, you see how that updates. All right, so really quick and easy to do that. I'm going to switch to our next style palette, click and apply it. So it's very, very fast to change the appearance of this room. And one thing with this style palette is that I had a different wall covering selected. And then our final style palette, there we've updated the appearance again. So pretty quick, pretty easy. Maybe you find a uh, design style and material style that works well and clients like. You can quickly save that to your library and then use it in future plans. So when I apply this style palette, we're back to where we started here. And the next thing we are going to work on is going to be the ceiling design. And for the ceiling, I'm going to open up an iteration of the plan that has a few more settings dialed in. So let me go ahead and open that now. I'm going to close our camera here. And the, the major difference between the plan we were just working on and the, um, oh, that's the same plan we're just working on. Let me open up the other version of it. There we are. So the difference between the plan we were just working on and this plan that I opened is that this plan has can lights popped into the ceiling and a few minor settings are already dialed in for um, other parts of the design, such as the materials. But the next part we're going to work on is the ceiling. You can vault ceilings in Chief Architect. You can create tray ceilings. You can create coffered ceilings. Super easy to do. What we are going to do for this design is we are going to create a tray ceiling up in here. So we're going to come back to our standard render view. And to create a tray ceiling, there are several ways you can do it. I'm going to click once into the design, and there's a button in the bottom toolbar that says uh, makes tray ceiling in room. So I'm going to click on it once. And when I do that, it's going to open up this tray ceiling specification. So here you can specify the size of the tray ceiling. You can specify whether it is recessed into the ceiling or dropping down into the room. You can also specify whether it's vertical or it has a pitch along the edges of it. You can specify information about the structure of it if you're using Chief Architect Premier. You can also have a molding automatically generate up in the tray ceiling, and I have a molding already picked out, a rope light, and I have a rope light picked out. And then you can specify whether you want what the materials for the tray ceiling should be, and I already have those picked out. And I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And you can see how um, Chief adds that into the design. So next, we are going to talk about uh, 3D rendering techniques as we draw to the, to the close to the conclusion of the webinar. So I've been working in our standard rendering technique today, and I have a line drawing overlaid on top of it. I like working in this rendering technique. It's just a nice, clean rendering technique. And I like having the line drawing overlaid on top of it so you can clearly see where the edges of objects are. Some people might even present uh, the design just for their client in this rendering technique. But there's a lot of different 3D rendering techniques in the software, and they all can be used for various purposes. So I'm going to open up the rendering technique options on the left-hand side. And I'm going to open up this option that says technique options at the very bottom. We have all these same 3D rendering techniques, but I just wanted to quickly show you what the standard rendering technique looks like when I remove the line drawing. Still looks really good. You'd probably present it to your client if you if you wanted to. It's just a little bit easier to work with the line drawing overlaid on top of it. The next view we're going to show is the vector view. And what this is going to do is it's going to remove the wood grain texture and flooring texture and countertop material so that all you're seeing is colors and lines for your objects. So you can see how that updates our view. It's also a nice clean view to work in. The physically based ray trace is the view that creates the photorealism, and we'll talk about that more in a little bit here. The clay rendering technique creates an abstract view of the model, and there's a lot of different settings that go into the clay rendering technique. And when I first switched to the clay rendering technique, you may think the scene looks odd. And the reason for this is because the settings I have dialed in for this rendering technique do not use the object's materials and colors. And instead, they use a layer color affiliated with each object. And we're not going to go into 
uh, detail about what layers do in Chief Architect, but just note that each, each object in the plan is on a layer and each layer is set to display a certain color. In this case, the object layer colors you're seeing are using a combination of black and white colors. But if I switch my layer set from this general camera view layer set to a specific layer set I have for clay rendering, you see how that scene updates and mostly everything is white in the design except for the wall cabinets. It's just a nice way that you can isolate certain objects in the plan and really focus on um, certain conversations without getting distracted by other details. So I'm going to switch back from our active layer display option. I'm going to open that up and switch from the clay layer set I had created back to the camera view layer set and then close the active layer display options. And then next we have the glass house rendering technique. This is a fun rendering technique because it creates a transparency throughout the design, allowing you to see what's going on in objects or on the other side of walls. The next rendering technique is a technical illustration. There's a watercolor rendering technique. It's kind of an artistic view. The line drawing. A lot of people like this line drawing because it removes the color and materials from objects. So you can really focus on a conversation about the form of the design rather than um, being uh, hunkered down with the conversation of materials too early in the design process. And then there's a dual tone rendering technique. And then the rendering technique we basically we briefly mentioned is the physically based ray trace. And this is what creates the photorealism in the software. So when I click on it, you'll notice how the view updates and it now looks a lot better. So you can see reflections that we have coming in um, if we zoom in, right, you can see reflections off our countertop. Our stainless steel looks really good. There's more definition in our grout lines in general. This tile backsplash I had picked out has some reflective, almost mirror-like tiles, and you can see uh, how that appears. You can see the matte material ha has a little bit of a sheen to it. So overall, this creates the more photorealistic view that you might make for clients to help sell the job or create marketing materials to advertise your business. So really quick and easy to create these 3D rendering techniques. And as we bring this webinar into a conclusion and we'll open it up for questions in a minute, but we have a render or a mobile app called the 3D Viewer. So how this works is once you've created a design in Chief Architect, you can export a 3D model. And when you export the 3D model, it creates a share link. So you can provide your client or subcontractors with the share link. And when they click on it, if they click on it through a web browser, it opens a 3D version of the design in a web browser that they can uh, then maneuver through and see your design. If they're using, if they're clicking on the, the share link in on a mobile device, it'll prompt them to download the free 3D viewer app. And once they do that, they'll be able to load the model. And you can see in this image, there's little joysticks that they can maneuver around it. And there's also virtual reality controls. So when they use these controls, you can physically hold the tablet and be physically walking in the real world. And you'll walk through the virtual model. And you can also turn on your, um, your, your tablet or phone's camera and insert your backdrops as a surrounding. So you can see what looking out doors and windows would look like. So it's a fun way that the client can interact with the design um, in their own time in this world where a lot of work's done virtually. So as I conclude and Debbie um, prepares for questions, I want to thank everyone for attending. If you have any questions, you can send me an email, philip at chiefarchitect.com. There's also a free trial available on the website. I was using Chief Architect Premier X13 today but nearly everything we did, you can also do in the interiors version. And one of the good things about the software and the program in general is that there's a lot of training available that goes along with it. So there's over 500 videos, 700 um, how-to articles, there's demos, manuals, and more. And these are all available for free, even just on the free trial. And they're just directly on the website. You don't need an account or a login or anything to access that. So I wanted to thank everyone for attending. And Debbie, did we have any questions that came up during the webinar? 
Hey, Philip. Boy, do we have questions. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And, and it's been nice. People have been putting into the uh, the chat the free trial like links and stuff like that. So people have been helping each other out today with certain questions. Okay, excellent. We, yeah, I think we have some users out there. And thanks for um, letting us know about what version you're using today, because that was a lot of people were asking that question today as well. So let's see, Victoria, she's once, so these are in chronological order, Phillips, from the beginning. So Victoria, how do you make the renderings look so realistic, even with the water in the tub? I think it was the first um, visual that you had. Yeah, so we had an image towards the beginning. Let me see if I can pull it up here. So the question was, how do you make these renderings look photorealistic and what's going on with this water in the tub? So this is using that physically based ray trace rendering technique I demoed towards the end there. So you just get create your design, get your uh, get get your model how you want it, and then switch to that rendering technique. And for the water in the tub, there's just generic 3D modeling tools in the software where you can create uh, really anything you can imagine, any shape, any shape or size um, you can imagine. And what's going on here is we've created just a mostly a square box plopped it into the bathtub and changed the material to be a water material. Okay, that's great. The questions keep coming, but I'm going to keep uh, in my, with my chronological thing here. So, okay. so with Dawn, she's asking, do window and door dimensions specified include trim, excuse me, include trim molding, or is that actual window size without the trim? Yeah, so you can specify both of those in Chief Architect. You can specify whether it's going to the uh, to the casing itself or whether you are going to the window. If we go to the plan, and we're just going to very briefly show the dimension features. We're not going to go into them in a lot of detail, but you can uh, go through your manual dimension tools or your automatic dimension tools. And under openings, here you can specify where the dimension they're picking up. And I think the question was wanting to go to the window itself, which would be this option for sides. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so there was a question here from an educator named Lisa. She says, uh, does NKBA affiliated school student members, do they get a discount for using Chief? That's the first question. Okay, yeah, I know we have academic versions of the software. And uh, for this user, I'd, re I'd recommend you reach out directly to our sales department. You can send me a, a note. Um, I'm not sure what all the ins and outs of that are right off the top of my head, but I could I can do a little bit of digging and, uh, and, and um, see what the answer is there if you want to send me an email. Okay, perfect. Yep. So that would be a question about, you know, what the student discount is and also if there's an educator discount, just so, so you're aware. Okay. All right. And then let's see. So Hannah's saying, I'm wondering, how do you create a demo or construction plan using the layers tool? Okay. Yeah. So the question is a remodeling scenario and she wants to see an as-built plan and then have a remodel or a completed plan where you would show client design options. What you can do is you can create an uh, go out to the field and you can sync Chief Architect with a Bluetooth laser. So you can go room to room, capture the measurements in the laser, the, in the laser, and then get those updated directly in your plan. Um, so once you have the as-built plan made, what people are doing is they're creating a save as, and then they're uh, saving a second copy of that. So you have two plans. One would be your as-built plan. The other would be your um, remodel or completed plan. And then you just work on the plan. And once you have it completed, you can overlay the remodel and the as-built plan so that they're um, transposing on top of each other. And this works in both 2D and 3D. Um, so that's kind of how you, how you, uh, how you would show that, um, show that to your clients or for your subcontractors. Okay, and then David is asking, how did the casing size get specified and why? And does it also work without casings? Yeah, so the question was about the casing on the window. How do you control that? So if I double click on the window, there is a option on the left that says casing. So here you just pick the casing profile from the library. I'm just using a basic rectangular style. And then you specify the size here. 
Great, thank you. And then Roz is asking, how often uh, does Chief reach out to cabinet manufacturers to update the door finishes for their catalogs? Yeah, good question. So Chief partners with hundreds of manufacturers to get their content available in the software. And which manufacturers we partner with is directly driven by the end user, so, so you. Um, and if there's a manufacturer that you want to see in Chief Architect that we do not have currently in the program, you can send us an email um, saying, hey, I want to see this manufacturer. Oh, I have a rep and here's their contact information. And then it also helps if you reach out to the manufacturer that, um, themselves and ask to see their content in Chief Architect so you can help sell their products. And then that way, when we reach out to the manufacturer to get the conversation started, they know that there's demand from their customers to see their, their content in, uh, in Chief Architect. And then we update these catalogs um, typically a couple times a year per manufacturer. Oh, good. Thank you. And then Leo was asking something about um, if we want to change the countertops um, after the cabinets have been placed, do we have to go back and change um, each cabinet top? Yeah, so I think the question was about countertops and how you can change those. Um, I think specifically she was referring to the uh, material that you see on the counter, the, the uh, cabinet. You can quickly update that for all of your cabinets at once by going to the library browser and then just finding a new material that you want to use. Um, I've been using stuff from Style Stone. So let's just pick out a, let's just pick out a new, um, new countertop. So I think I have one of these two right now, but let's say we wanted to switch it to this one that has a drastically different color. When I select it in the plan, you can see me my mouse changes and the bottom left corner, there's different scoping modes for distributing it. And I'm going to go ahead and switch it to room mode. And now it's going to replace this white countertop with the black countertop anywhere that the white countertop is present in the plan. Okay. And then I think that same question would apply to um, change in the cabinets as well, correct? Yeah, yep, absolutely. You just find the uh, the new material you want in the library browser and then apply it. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Um, there's so many questions here, so I'm going to keep rolling. Uh, let's see. Uh, Hannah's asking, when I've added countertops to the library, the orientation of the countertop changes as it rounds the corners. It isn't cohesive. How would I fix that? Hmm, okay. So I think the question is referring to the um, to the countertop corner, whether it's uh, rounded or coming to a straight edge. And I honestly don't know the answer to that right off the top of my head, um, Hannah. If you if you want to send me an email, philip at chiefarchitect.com. If you have a plan where this is occurring, and I can I can look into it and uh, and see what's going on there. Great, thank you for that. And then Kirk is just making a comment here. He said this software seems much smarter than the software I'm using right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, the software is pretty smart. And it, we tr when we design the software, we try to keep in mind real world scenarios and that kitchen and bath designers would be using it just to help automate your design process. Okay. And then Gwen was asking something about when you were talking about wall niches. And she was asking the wall niche that you were working on in this today's session, was that on an outside wall? So in this session, I used the um, interior wall tool instead of the exterior wall tool. Um, if you're just doing a kitchen and bath design, it, for the most part, it doesn't really matter uh, which wall you're using if you're only worried about what's going on inside the plan. If we look in the floor plan, it might be a little bit difficult to tell, but you can see this is where the wall niche is and I have it on the um, interior portion of the interior wall. So it'd be a little bit easier to see if I was using an exterior wall that was a two by six in siding, because it'd be a little bit, little bit larger, but I'm using an interior wall and I do have that wall niche on the interior side. Okay, great. And then I'm sure you were probably anticipating this question from Cynthia. She says, can you describe the different levels of chief architect and what you get for each level when you purchase? Yeah, okay. yep. So let me pull up the website here. So I've been using Chief Architect Premier in this webinar. We also have a version called Chief Architect Interiors. So the difference is Chief, Ar Chief Architect Premier includes all the kitchen, bath, and interior design features of Chief Architect Interiors. Plus it includes features for framing and landscaping and just, just kind of more structural design features in general. 
Um, the things that I showed today that are not in Chief Architect Interiors is like being able to drag out that countertop, press tab and specify how far you're manually dragging that out. And then earlier I mentioned that you can overlay designs in 2D and 3D for modeling uh, scenarios. That feature is only available in Chief Architect Premier. Um, and as far as obtaining the program, there's options to do it as an outright purchase or you can rent the program by the month. And then um, you have all those training resources I mentioned on the website to get up to speed with the software. Perfect, thank you. And then we're gonna go back to some other questions here about the software from Gloria. Why do base corner cabinets always create a line in the toe kick? Um, she said, this is a glitch that's been happening for a long time. Hmm, okay, why do base corner cabinets always create a line in the toe kick? Well, let's, uh, let's flip around. Let's maybe move to a different corner in the plan and see if we can see what's going on. So I've got a base cabinet. So I think she is referring to this line that you can barely see right there. And I think the reason for that is the program's kind of treating it as a different uh, part of the cabinet. And I'll make a note of it and, uh, and run it by our development and see, uh, see what the deal is. But good question. If you need more information about that or need any follow up, feel free to send me a note. Okay, thank you. And that's again, philip at chiefarchitect.com, right? philip at chiefarchitect.com, yep. Thank you. And then Dawn uh, is asking, is there a way to make the countertop flow better so it doesn't look all choppy? I'm not sure what she's referring to there, but. Hmm. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not I'm sure. I'm not sure right off the top of my head either. Okay. Yeah, Dawn, if you want to send me an email with maybe an, um, uh, an example of where you're seeing this, that would, that would that'd help me uh, understand the scenario and I can, I can, better, uh, I can better assist. Thank you. And then from Aaliyah, she's asking about for a corner wall cabinet that is pie cut, if you remove the doors for an open cabinet, the center rails still exist. She's asking, how do I remove those center rails? Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can do that. So I think she said she removed the door, so it's just an opening. Correct. And then the rail in the middle is what she's wanting to remove. You know, that's a good question. I'm, I'm honestly not sure if I know the answer to that right off the top of my head. Um, I don't want to waste everyone's time trying to poke around at different settings. But Aaliyah, if you want to send me a note, I can, I can dig into that. I'm writing this down and uh, I can follow up with you on that. Great. Thank you. And then let's see. There was a question here from Ivy, but I think some people were helping her. Um, in the chat today, but I'm, I'm going to ask it anyway. What's the best way to create a cabinet filler so that it can be dimensioned on an elevation? Yeah, so she wants to create a cabinet filler and be able to dimension it. So let's take a look at that. Um, let's jump back to our floor plan view for a moment. And I've got a lot going on. Let's turn off some of these layers to make it a little bit cleaner. I'm going to turn off the ceilings layer. Okay. Um, let's turn off the moldings layer. Okay, so let's bump this cabinet out and then let's add a filler just into this area. All right, so we've got a filler right here. And if we go to our wall elevation, created a new wall elevation and let's use that NKBA auto elevation dimensions and see what happens. There it picked up the filler. And one thing, if, if you're seeing um, fillers come in automatically, you, if you're using Chief Architect Premier, there's a feature where if you have a gap between two cabinets, it'll automatically fill a space with the filler. Those, if you have that feature turned on, then it won't pick up the filler with your dimensioning tools. So that feature, if you open up the default settings and you go to the cabinet features and base cabinet, oh, not base cabinet, it's under general cabinet. There's an option here that says create automatic fillers. I have that unchecked. So I think she'll want to uncheck that and then use the manual filler tools to be able to pick them up with dimensions. Okay, okay, that's great. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see. And then th I thought this was a good one. So Summer's asking when showing the different styles, uh, uh, the kitchen, how do you save them to show them to a client? 
Yeah, so there's a couple of options. Um, one is I created this island and um, what you could do is you could uh, create architectural blocks for this for the various island styles and add them to your user library and then just drop them in in front of the client if you need to do that. Um, it also doesn't take long to design them. So if you're comfortable with quickly mocking them up in front of the client, you could, or you could create them ahead of time and create an image collage like I did so that um, you can show the client, hey, we have four options. They're not watching you design it and they can just pick an option um, kind of from what you've presented. Yeah, I like that idea. Just like what you're showing here. People yeah. are very, very visual, aren't they? <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. And then I, I know you talked a little bit about tutorials on the website, and uh, there was a specific question here about um, the tutorial on how to set up styled palettes. So is that available on your website? It is, yep. So on the website, let me, let's see if we can find it real quick. So under, under the user center, if you go down to training videos, I'm not quite sure actually where it's gonna be wrapped right top of my head but it'll be under the training video section and you can always search for it on the website to find information um, about the style palette video. And these training videos, Philip, they're free, is that right? They're free, yep. So you just go to user center and then training videos. You don't need to be logged into an online account or anything, and then you can, uh, you can, you can access them. If you're new to the software and you go to this training videos section, there's a playlist here called the quick start. And this is typically what we recommend if you're brand new to the software and just getting started. Okay, great. Thank you. There's been there's many more questions here, and I don't want to take too much more time here, but there, I think there were some questions about the, um, the 3D viewer. Where can you find it? How does it work? That type of stuff. Yeah, so in Chief Architect, how it works is you get into the th 3D view, and then you go to File, Export, Export Chief Architect 3D Viewer File, and it'll prompt you to log into your Chief Architect account. Um, and then you give the, the 3D viewer file a name and then it completes the export in a couple of seconds. And then what you do is you go to the website, you click on my account, you log into your account. And once you're in, you'll see a section for 3D viewer models. And from there, you will see the um, share link for that model. And you just copy that link and send the client an email and then they can start viewing it. Um, if you need more information about that 3D viewer, um, you can go to the, to the website and if you hover over products and then click on 3D viewer app, there's more information and demos and sample models that you can load. Okay, great. Thank you, Philip. And then there's a question here from Tricia about, is there any way to see through glass doors or shower enclosures other than ray tracing? She said, I've tried everything. Yeah, so good question. So the user is wanting to see, um, this is a ray trace view, but if you're in like a standard view, you should be able to see through glass. Um, if you're in a vector view, initially you won't be able to see through it since it's just showing a material color. Um, and then the next version of the software X14 will have some features and solutions though, so you can see through uh, transparent glass though. Okay, and then there was a question, thank you. There's a question here from Lauren. Can you recommend what Bluetooth laser to use? Yeah, so we recommend the Leica um, Bluetooth laser. There's only certain models of the laser that work with remodeling and chief architect. Um, so uh, um, you'll wanna go to the website, just search Leica, and there'll be an article that has information about which lasers are supported. And how to sync that up with Chief, correct? Exactly. Yep. You got to sync it up to the Bluetooth on the computer, and then it should just work with Chief Architect. Okay, perfect. There was a question here about um, from Kim. We are a sightline and greenfield dealer, and the cabinet schedule nomenclature is different. Uh, sightline cabinet numbers for ordering are different, and there, I guess she's wondering, how do we change that, or how can that be changed? Yeah, so the nomenclature that you see in a floor plan view, it has an, what we call an automatic label set up to it. So you can see in this cabinet to the right of the range, it's a four door base, uh, 33 inches wide. If you double click on it and open it up, there's a section here for label. You can see that we are using an automatic label, but you can manually specify a label. And there's features here called macros. I'm not gonna go into the, the, the fine details of macros, but you can have them automatically populate information about the cabinet. 
So you can set up these macros to, uh, to be formatted in whatever nomenclature you need them. Okay, great. And then just to clarify a little bit further when we were talking about the style palettes, um, the, the other uh, question that came up about that was, she's talking about style palettes where the whole kitchen materials change. Not sure um, if you understand that. The whole not. kitchen materials change. So yeah, I would have to see her example in the style palette she has set up. Um, that might be a good one to send me an email, philip at chiefarchitect.com with, with more information about what you're seeing, the specific plan. You can export style palettes um, in the user library if you go to, if you right click on it and go to export library, it'll create a file for these style palettes. Um, so you might try sending me a note with, uh, with a plan and some examples of what you're seeing. Great, that sounds good. And then I don't think this is within the program software that you're showing today or any of Chiefs, but I'm not sure. There's been questions here about, you know, can you price out in Chief like cabinet pricing program? Is there anything like that? Yeah, so Chief Architect by default, when you place a cabinet, it doesn't have ca uh, pricing built into it. Um, you can add your pricing to cabinets if you know it. Um, I didn't show this, but you can also create materials lists and schedules and work with your manufacturers um, to obtain the pricing. Um, the real strength of Chief Architect is speed in creating a very detailed design and creating nice 3D renderings um, for, for helping sell the jobs to clients. Okay, very good. And then from Shelly, um, she's wondering, how do I find out what cabinet manufactured or offered in cheap? Is there anything on your website that outlines that? By any yeah, time? absolutely. So if you go to the website and hover over user center, this link right here says catalog downloads, and this will show you what's available uh, with the program. Oh, perfect. Perfect. There are, I think we've covered just about everything here for the most part. Um, Someone was ask, actually asking one more question here, which maybe you can help with. What if the export chief architect 3D viewer is grayed out? What does that mean? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I've, I haven't seen that before. I would, uh, I would need to see the specific use case um, for, for what they're seeing and an example to be able to provide them with more info. So that's another email to you. Yeah, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be best to send me another note um, with what you're seeing. Okay, perfect. I think, um, oh, and then someone was asking, I'll just give a general information here about the CEUs. So um, I will be sending out a general certificate of completion to everyone that's attended today's session that comes in a follow-up email. It includes the recording, the survey link for the evaluations and further information about contacting Philip and our sponsor as well. So at this point, I know we've gone over time and everyone is thanking you here in the chat box. And I uh, just wanted to thank you myself personally, Philip, for always having a great program and um, giving everybody here that attends more information about how to use your products. And um, it's, it's been great. And I want to also thank uh, Gebra for their generous sponsorship for our webinars this month. Again, Philip, is there anything you'd like to add? I don't think so. If anybody has any questions, you can just send me a note. And I would like to thank everyone for attending. And I would like to thank you, Debbie, for letting us host today. Oh, you're so welcome. I hope you have a great day, everyone. Thank you.